With the new Dragonflight expansion coming out, we know that there are going to be multiple returning characters whose stories will continue in this expansion. One of these characters is named Rathion, one of the more interesting and complex characters in the game's history. The story of the Black Dragonflight Prince has spanned over multiple expansions, and the situations he's been in, and the decisions he has made have been... questionable at best. Let's learn about this dragon's blunders, triumphs, and ultimately how he's been labeled as one of Warcraft's stupidest dragons. The origin of the Black Prince is in a zone you probably wouldn't expect. Across the barren dunes and ravines of the Badlands, a red dragon by the name of Reistraza is experimenting with black dragon eggs. Under the guise of a goblin, she simply goes by Rhea. What's up? With the help from the player characters, you partake in a questline that involves the imprisonment of a black dragon named Naixandra who is being forced to lay eggs by Rhea. The reason for this is she is trying to experiment and try and purify these dragon eggs of corruption. Because literally almost every black dragon is corrupted. And while it might be a noble cause, uh, yeah, no, uh, it's a pretty brutal thing to do for a member of the Red Dragon Flight. Anyways, during this quest line, you find a Titan of Ice that purifies one of the eggs. Obviously, the Black Dragonflight does not like their eggs being stolen and experimented on, so they attack the player character. In the process, you kill Nyxandra. This questline ends with Rhea being burned to literal ash by Deathwing. But that purified egg had found its way to the Twilight Highlands, where the Red Dragonflight are protecting it for safekeeping and uh, until it gets stolen. <laughs> Hi. This section of our story is a core part for the legendary Daggers questline for rogues in Cataclysm. Korostraza is understandably upset. Under her care was the one black dragon egg that we believe was free of the taint of Deathwing's corruption, and it was stolen away from us by thieves in the night. You've found for us our only lead. The rogues from Ravenholt are behind this. Raven. It just doesn't make sense. A mongrel band of petty thieves? How did they even know about the egg? We'll get to the bottom of this. Madness. And so, the player character and the Red Dragon Mostraz travel to Ravenhold Manor, and rogue players put their skills to the test and sneak into the building and creep into the dark depths of the basement in order to find their prized egg. That's right, mortal. The prize you seek no longer sleeps within a shell. Here I am. In the flesh. I'm not some trophy for a red dragon's mantelpiece, and I'm never going back. Don't look so surprised. We dragons are conscious even within our shells. As I grew, I could hear the plotting and scheming. I was to be born a prisoner. But I'm one of a kind. A black dragon raised free from the taint of my father's corruption. And that's how I intend to stay. Free. Your Highness, we caught this beast snooping around the caves just outside the compound. I'm not afraid of you! Wait, who, who are you? <laughs> You don't recognize your former prisoner? Shall we execute him, my prince? No. I want him to deliver a message to the Red Dragonflight. Tell them that I am free of my father's madness, and I will be free of them as well. I am to be left alone. This will be my first and only warning. But... but Deathwing's minions may have you killed. <laughs> Deathwing's minions should be afraid of me. Get him out of here. And Farad, break his legs. Yes, sir. Now then, my new friend, we have much to talk about. The player character teams up with Rathion and his roguish goons to dispatch of his corrupted Dragonflight relatives, and Deathwing himself. 
Players travel to the ruins of Gilneas, the Tower of Karazhan, and even the final raid in Cataclysm to defeat Deathwing and claim the components to make their legendary daggers. Once that's all done, they return to Ravenholt to discover a grisly aftermath. Your eyes do not deceive you. The treacherous Red Dragon flight sought to kill me off. I hope now you see the truth about them. Champion, you have your reward, but there is one final dragon we need to slay. My prince, we should leave this place in case they come back to finish the job. Farad, I was just talking about you. The final black dragon. The one who's been more hidden than any of them. Your Highness, I have never tried to conceal what I am from you. Yes, you rescued me while I was still within my egg, and I owe you my life. But you are a black dragon, and you share the corruption of all my brothers and sisters. That is not true. Do you deny it? The dark visions? The voices in your head? No. No, I am in control of the voices. They're here to help me. And what are they telling you now, Farad? What do your dark masters whisper? They want me to kill you now. Oh, why did you have to go and anger them? You have proven too difficult to control. I will never be controlled. The Red Dragon fight has no idea what they unleashed when they experimented on my egg. Hero, strike now! Use your newfound power to finish him! It is done, friend. To my knowledge, I am the only black dragon who remains. A new age for mortals has dawned, and heroes like you are among the vanguard. I must go now. Disappear. Perhaps we will meet again. I hope we find ourselves on the same side. Till we meet again. But it wouldn't take long for us to run into the new self-proclaimed leader of the Dragonflight. Because in the next expansion, Mist of Pandaria, Rathion wandered across this new continent. While exploring this strange new land, he made his home in an inn called the Tavern of the Mists. There's also a drugged out vermin under the floorboards of the inn, and in the back there's a bunch of monkeys in a hot tub. This is not important to our story, but I just felt the need to mention it. Pandaria, a land of mystery? history, and opportunity. Also, during this time, the young dragon got two bodyguards, who are simply named Left and Right. Apparently, this is a reference from Game of Thrones, where an old grandma also has guards who are referred to as Left and Right, but uh, I don't know, I'm not a nerd who reads that stuff. Anyways, while the Horde and the Alliance waged war trying to claim the territory over this strange new land, Rathion played a different role and helped players obtain their legendary cloaks in a long, complicated questline. This questline begins with Rathion summoning the player character to the Tavern of the Mists to discuss a disturbing vision he had. Ah, if it isn't my favorite master assassin, I was hoping I would find you here in Pandaria. Very good. Let's talk. Tong, drinks please. My father, Deathwing, tried to destroy the whole of Azeroth. He was misguided, of course, but he was right about one thing. Our world is so fragile. We are a point of light in a universe of shadow, a candle in a tempest. Sometimes, I think it was the very precariousness of our world that drove my father to madness. Ah, thank you, Tong. Now to my point. I believe we are headed towards a reckoning. And no, I am not talking about the current conflict between the Alliance and the Horde. But the war deeply troubles me. Believe me. 
what Garrosh Hellscream achieved in Theramore is nothing compared to the horrors that are even now bearing down on our fragile home. Behold the power of the foe! Do you see my concern? A divided Azeroth cannot possibly stand against the darkness. This war has to end soon before it consumes our strength. I want you to know that your alliance has my full and unwavering support in this campaign. How do we bring a swift and decisive end to the conflict? I believe the answer lies with heroes like you. Uh-huh. We must ensure that you are up to the task, and then equip you accordingly. So during Mist of Pandaria, Riathion had a vision of the Legion invading, an event that would eventually happen two expansions from now. Since Rathion is the new leader of the Black Dragonflight, he had the full responsibility of defending Azeroth, and he would stop at nothing to make sure the people of his world were prepared. His plan was to have one of the factions dominate and fully conquer the other so that they could be united as one. Now, the faction Rathion allies himself with is entirely dependent on what the faction the player character was a part of. So for this video, let's just say it's the Alliance. For the Alliance. Now, most of the legendary quest line is not that remarkable and is mainly just Rathion sending players to go do chores and gameplay related stuff. But meanwhile, Garrosh Hellscream, War Chief of the Horde, is running around warmongering around Pandaria. During this time, he bumps into Prince Anduin of the Alliance, who is protecting an ancient Mogu artifact called the Divine Bell. This is also one of the funniest cinematics in Warcraft history, because Anduin just spouts a whole bunch of expository dialogue, and Garrosh ignores literally all of it. The Mogu made the Divine Bell to create chaos, but the Pandaren created a special mallet to turn the echoes of that chaos into perfect harmony. That mallet was hidden for thousands of years, until now. Die! Whelp. After breaking a 10-ton bell over a 15-year-old child, Garrosh then runs away like an evil cartoon villain, and somehow Anduin survives. His wounds were tended to, and he found himself recovering in the Tavern of the Mists, where he first met Rathion. The first scene we find of them interacting together is them discussing the mysterious Isle of Thunder, and the recently resurrected Mogu leader, Lei Shen. Why did you play that piece just now? It's a Pandaren board game. The object is for both players to win. That's ridiculous. The Thunder King. What a magnificent individual. Could you imagine what his empire would be like today? if it had not been overthrown and hidden by the Pandaren. I couldn't imagine a crueler tyrant. He enslaved this entire continent. But I can tell you no great empire has ever stood the test of time by crushing its own citizens. Remember, the Mogu were overthrown. That should be the lesson of the Thunder King. It's your move, by the way. I worry you may be too soft to wear your kingdom's crown, Prince Anduin. You would do well to learn some of your father's hardness. Are you lecturing me? You're what, two years old? Two in dragon years. It is your move. Champion, return now to the Isle of the Thunder King. I will meet you at the Forge, where together we will create an instrument of legendary power. To what end? What are you two working towards? World peace. Using a Mogu weapon forge whose powers you barely understand. My dear Prince, you and I share the same goals. We only differ in our level of commitment. Hmm. Come, hero. Let us shape a new Azeroth together. My friend, if you blindly trust a black dragon in the search for greater power, are you any better than Garrosh Hellscream? Please, just be careful. Look, Anduin, I'm gonna be perfectly blunt with you. He's talking about loot, and that's all I care about. The player character and Rathion then travel to the Isle of Thunder and use an ancient Mogu forge to create a legendary gem. This chapter ends with the player character killing Lei Shen, 
pulling the heart out of the Mogu demigod, and then Rathion eats said heart and trips balls. Oh, I see them. A million, million worlds glittering in their perfection. But one above all others. Oh. Oh, we have fallen. We must rebuild the final titan. Do not forget. For some reason, Rathion eating the heart of a demigod is never brought up in the story ever again. Rathion and the player character then travel around Pandaria to receive blessings from the four August Celestials. For the sake of brevity, I'm kind of skipping over this part, and all you really need to know is that the Celestials are giving Rathion wise advice and helping him deal with his daddy issues. Really, it's just a lot of talking. Welcome back, champion. Excellent work with the Celestials. Can you believe how chatty they were? I just wanted them to hand us our reward, but they would just talk, 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 talk. I'm sorry, where were we? Oh yes, I have something for you. Players are granted with epic capes, but our story isn't over. During the final chapter of our questline, Rathion travels to the Timeless Isle and he meets with the bronze dragon named Kairos, who is investigating this strange new island. Kairos, I want you to meet one of my most accomplished of agents. A pleasure. Tell us again why this island is so unique. The presence of the Timeless Isle is proof that many things are possible beyond the boundaries of linear thinking. What if it were possible to shape and mold time as you would a ball of clay? What possibilities await? What new worlds could we create? I like the way you think. Kairos will play a very important role later in our story, so just remember him for now. Okay, so the player does a bunch of tasks around the Timeless Isle, like collecting 5,000 Timeless Isle coins and defeating all of the four August Celestials by teaming up with a giant raid group. And then they so the Mist of Pandaria ends with the Alliance and Horde Rebels storming into Orgrimmar and putting an end to Garrosh Hellscream's tyranny. With the Horde at its weakest point, Rathion's dastardly plan of one faction overthrowing the other was just in reach until King Varian decided to let them all live and establish peace instead, foiling Rathion's plan and making his venture into Pandaria ultimately futile. Idiot, king, fool, imbecile. A complete waste. You were there! Is it true, then, what happened in Orgrimmar? That fool king! I did everything in my power. The whole world was his! He needed only seize it! Oh, sure, another year of fighting, enormous casualties trying to take Thunder Bluff, but the rest of the Horde would have caved eventually! Tong! Drink! Now! I thought Hellscream's victory was assured before he turned half of his Horde against him. So I changed my allegiance. Oh, don't look so surprised. I'm a black dragon. My loyalties are my own. But that idiot, idiot Rin. Hi, king indeed. Why did he allow another war chief? He could have united the world under the Alliance banner. What a fool I was to trust his ambition. Should have taken over the throne room myself, like Auntie Anixia. Get things done. Enough! Uh, what? Talk, talk, talk! Always you speak, never do you listen. You ignore the lessons of Pandaria. You see, there is balance in all things. Wisdom etched in our very fur. Black and white. Darkness and light. When the last emperor hid our land from the rest of the world, he also preserved the homeland of our ancient enemy, the man. Talk, 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 talk. You mistake your greatest strength for weakness. Do you see this? You. You're just a waiter. I promise you this. I will stop at nothing to prepare this world for the battle to come. Nothing! Oh, he did.
destroyed my inn. He left no tip. <laughs> he is not nice. So you might be wondering, okay, Rathion is clearly arrogant, but is he really the stupidest dragon in Warcraft? I mean, he hasn't been that stupid so far, but our story continues in the War Crimes book. Now this book is one of the more controversial ones, because the story that links the Mists of Pandaria expansion to the Warlords of Draenor expansion is entirely explained within this book and is barely touched on in game, and in this book we see Rathion's true stupidity. So in the book, the Horde and the Alliance are all at the Temple of the White Tiger, and Garrosh Hellscream is on trial for all of his heinous crimes. During Garrosh's trial, Terran Zhu reads his list of crimes, and I will now quote the book directly. <clears throat> for all the acts you committed in your name, or by those with whom you have allied. Genocide, murder, forcible transfer of population, enforced disappearance of individuals, enslavement, the abduction of children, torture, the killing of prisoners, forced pregnancy, and the wanton destruction of cities, towns, and villages not justified by military or civilian necessity. What say you to these charges, Garrosh Hellscream? And then Garrosh smiled, beginning to slowly applaud, although the chains about his wrists hampered the gesture. The show has barely commenced, and I already give it a standing ovation. This promises to be more entertaining than the Dark Moon Fair. I will not say I am guilty, for that denotes shame. Nor will I protest innocence, for I claim no such. Let the comedy begin. <laughs> Rathion watched from the stands and thought, wow. This abhorrent, psychopathic war criminal is just what I need to unify Azeroth. During the trial, they use a device called the Vision of Time, which is a giant hourglass that can be used to see past events. The Bronze Dragons Chromie and Kairos are also at the trial to help. But secretly, Kairos and Rathion team up to break Garrosh out. Kairos wants to do this because he is kind of pissed the Bronze Dragons lost their powers at the end of Cataclysm and wants to help the Infinite Dragonflight and be more powerful in the process. Rathion wants to do it because he wants to unify Azeroth under one banner. More about his plan later. Okay, so... <laughs> During the trial, Rathion secretly throws Chromie into a prison, and then Anduin goes to investigate, and then Rathion knocks him out. Then Kairos uses the Vision of Time to create a portal for Garrosh to escape through. All while this is happening, alternate evil timeline versions of the members of the trial teleport into the courtroom, and they start attacking their counterparts. But but then the August Celestials are all like, No, guys, don't fight. D -d don't you understand? You too could become Garrosh. So they don't fight their evil counterparts, and they just talk about their feelings. But then there's also the, the Dragon Maw Orcs, and they come in, and they start fighting, and oh my god, you what? Look, that is a really abridged version, but you get the idea. Okay, so Rathion's plan. What is it? Okay, here, here, here's what it is. Teleport Garrosh Hellscream to an alternate version of Draenor from 25 years ago, before the orcs drank the demon blood. Garrosh will then unite them as the Iron Horde, and then take them to our timeline through the Dark Portal, and then use them to ally all of Azeroth under one banner. To unite us and defeat the Legion. Does that mean kill all the Horde and the Alliance in the process? Seems kind of kind of kind of productive, so I, I I don't know. We can just figure that part out later. But wait, it gets better. Rathion didn't just want to do this once. He wanted to do this an infinite amount of times. That's right. Just keep opening up alternate universe Draenors and keep growing his army. Imagine an alternate universe in World of Warcraft history where we get ten Warlords of Draenor expansions in a row. Does this work? Of course it fucking doesn't. Like, instantly right after Garrosh is teleported to Draenor, he kills Kairos. Wow, so your whole plan relying on an unhinged psychopath who has constantly demonstrated his whole life that he is a loose cannon with anger issues was a bad idea. <laughs> what? What? Who would have guessed? Garrosh then goes to create the Iron Horde and uses the Dark Portal to invade Azeroth. 
but the offensive push is instantly defeated and we go to alternate Draenor, Garrosh dies in a 1v1, and we destroy the Iron Horde, but oh, whoops, since we made an alternate Draenor, we also made an alternate Gul'dan, who at the end of Warlords of Draenor is teleported to our world and kicks off the Legion invasion in the Legion expansion. So Rathion plays a huge role in the Legion invading Azeroth again, the very thing he was trying to protect us from. Also, let's just not ignore the last time the Legion invaded, the Horde and the Alliance won by teaming up, not by being under the same banner like Rathion was working towards. He, he's literally only causing more problems for us. And with the Third Legion invasion, Varian and Vol'jin die, and oh hey yeah, where's Rathion? Uh, oh, he's fucking nowhere the entire expansion. Side note, in the alpha for the Legion expansion, Rathion planned to show up in High Mountain, but during development, he was swapped for a new character named Abyssian, who is the oldest uncorrupted black dragon in existence. Okay, back to our main story. The next time we see Rathion, he just shows up in the next expansion, Battle for Azeroth, and waltzes into the Stormwind throne room like, oh hey, sorry about that whole planet destroying invasion I sparked, but it's okay because I'm sexy now, and huh! So yeah, the next time we see Rathion is during the last patch of the Battle for Azeroth expansion. To make up for his mistake, he helps us in defeating the old god Nazoth, which makes sense because it was Nazoth who corrupted his father, Deathwing. This is also kind of a soft reboot of his character since he has a new model, he grew up into a drake, and he's nowhere near as arrogant, but he is still just as snarky. For an old god who claims to see everything, you are blind to the threat before you. So Rathion is kind of like our guide in this patch of the expansion, and we go and retrieve the scales from Rathion's relatives, Onyxia and Nefarian, to make another cloak that helps us resist the corruption of the old gods. And during the final raid, Rathion plays a huge role in defeating Enzoth himself. And that is where our story ends for now. But we know Rathion is going to play a pretty big role in the Dragonflight expansion, where he will discover what it truly means to be the leader of the Black Dragonflight. Rathion is an interesting character a lot of players don't know the full story of, because his story is explained to players in a class-specific legendary questline from a decade ago, another legendary questline that was entirely removed from the game and finally, an external book that players would have to purchase and read. Which is why I made this video, because flawed, complex, interesting characters like Rathion are few and far between in the Warcraft universe. And I'll be watching with curiosity on what the Black Dragonflight Prince will do next.